Hey guys, so Super12 had a question on one of my last videos, the collision meshes in Gmod. Uh, he thought originally that it was due to that, I think, but it's actually due to multi-sub-objects. So just to explain quickly what multi-sub-objects are and why you can't use, well, I don't know why exactly you can't use them in Source, but Source just doesn't use them. Uh, so I'll quickly show like what multi-sub-objects are useful for and essentially for for doing a candy cane like he wants to do you don't need it uh, you can actually just get away with doing one texture and do it like this uh, like this is just one texture it's actually kinda overkill but anyways so you could of course like painfully cut in all of these stripes and do it with vertex colors instead of a texture but that would probably take you like I don't know, three or four times longer than just doing it this way and doing it with one texture. So, quickly, I guess, before I go into that, I will show just a little example of what multi sub objects essentially are and what they're good for. So, multi sub objects let you put multiple materials on one model. So, for example, if you go into polygon mode and you go to polygon material IDs, you can set the ID here. So what these IDs are actually doing is they correspond to a map channel of your multi-sub object. So I've already made one here, it's just selecting multi-sub and I just set the number to two and drag and drop these other two materials and that's all I did. So this one has an ID for this polygon of two, this one has one for one, which is one and two. It automatically does it, that's really all you gotta do. So, if you, no, I don't want to drag that one, I want to drag the multi-sub. So, drag the multi-sub on, and you get materials. This one already had an ID, that's why it's got that one. If I can get back to this. So, as you can see, you can kind of just play around with it and get different materials based on what you've got in your multi sub object. I'm not sure why exactly it's kind of messing around here. I think it's probably because of that. Maybe. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. So I had already messed with the map channel on that one because I was trying it a different way. But yeah, so if you do these materials or these polygon IDs, you can set it to like one or you can set it to two and you can get the different. Uh, textures that you've got in here, different materials. So that's what it's useful for. Uh, but as I said, for a candy cane, you don't need it. It's overkill. You don't really need that for a lot of cases, actually. It's just really not needed. So I'll get back to this candy cane modeling. So uh, let's get right down to it. I'm not going to go over like the texture creation because it's just straight lines, actually. It's be pretty boring. So to make this, uh, I go in front view, go under shapes, and you go line, and we'll just draw a quick shape, something like that. Disable in viewport for a second, easier to work with. So you might be going, that's not a candy cane, and that's true, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a fillet. Fillets are super handy for getting nice rounded corners when you really don't want to have to do them yourself. So I'll go something like that. Let me move this over just a touch more. And yeah. So splines is what we're using here, and it's super, super handy, super useful. Uh, it actually can unwrap itself for you and actually it's one of the reasons I use splines where I can. So if you want it to unwrap itself for you and all you gotta do is just throw a texture on it later is you want to make sure generate mapping coordinates and real world map size are checked. Uh, I had a problem earlier when I was testing it out. If you don't have the real world map size on then you can get some really weird results uh, where they, for example, in this case where it's uh, curved here, it'll actually try to curve that in your UV space for some reason. Um, so just be aware of that. You could, if you do the real world map size, it'll actually lay it all out flat and nice for you. I'll just... 
Oh yeah, I'll have to actually enable it. Uh, so, if I go into my UV editor, this is what you get. So it's really, really handy. You can just like resize the whole thing, and it's like fully unwrapped, man. Like it's just the best. I love using splines just for this reason. So we got our spline, we got our shape, we got our unwrap is actually all done. It's gonna be a like super, super fast video. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to, like I said, I'm not going to go over the texture creation because it's actually pretty straightforward. But, like, all I did was just straight lines, different colors. You could make different thickness ones if you really wanted to and get all crazy and all that kind of stuff. But be aware that it would make it harder to line up everything. Like, that's the biggest problem with actually doing this candy cane is just getting everything to line up. So... I'm going to take my material, drop it on. wonder how close that is already. Ooh, that's pretty close. I got to touch it just a bit more, but not even a whole lot. Uh, one of the things I like to do when I'm unwrapping is I actually turn off the map scenes. It actually just makes it a little bit easier, at least for myself, to see things, like especially these kind of minute details where they happen to be right on a seam. And I'm going to call that good because I'm not really going to get much closer, I think. I think it's about as close as I'm going to get, I think. Yeah, that's about as close as I was going to get, so I'm just going to undo I'm just leave it at that. So that's really all there is to it. And you can just uh, export it the same way that you did before. Like if you really wanted to add a collision mesh to it, I would probably just do like a box here, a box there, and a box here. Uh, separate ones, obviously, because you can't have concave collision meshes. It just doesn't work. So yeah. I hope that's been enlightening, and I hope you guys have more questions, because I actually don't mind doing these kind of little helpful videos, as long as people are finding them helpful. So, I'll talk to you guys later, and hope you enjoyed it. Bye.